this conference will now be recorded um i'm gonna go ahead and have cassie go ahead and call the roll uh ed rutherford here <laughs> elmo i'm here wayne lewis here steve wilson Tanner Kostelik. Here. John Labar. Here. And we have a new face. I'm Jason Luther. I guess me. Yeah. And I'm here. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. And a second? I'll support this is Al. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? In your packet, there should have been a copy of the minutes from the previous meeting. If you had a chance to review those, hopefully you did. Um, I am looking for a motion to approve those minutes. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? not let's go ahead and vote to approve those minutes all those uh, in favor aye. 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 aye anybody opposed okay that motion carries um next on our agenda is the harbor master's report um aye. i had a meeting with um and gentry about things uh at the marina and our cooperation between us and the DDA. Uh, it was a really productive meeting. We had a lot of things that went back and forth in it. Uh, the DDA is going to try to get a bike rack or two down at the marina as part of their downtown ones that they are putting in, if possible. Um, we also talked about hanging baskets. We're going to try to add a few more hanging baskets down at the marina. We're going to try uh, to get them over on the other side of the docks away from Prentice Street, as well as some down over on the uh, transient docks. And then in addition to that, we talked about the community art project that she had mentioned last time during the last meeting and um, the possibility of um, at the fish cleaning station when we board that up every year, there are artists that come in a lot of times want to have uh, classes with the kids. So there's a possibility that we might paint those boards with the kids just to kind of dress it up down there. Other than that, uh, we're going to start working on a survey for the seasonal boaters to see what their aspirations are, or what they hope they can see down there at the marina. Um, we're going to start working on that next week. So expect me to probably send you some survey questions and have you take a look at them and see if there's others that you want me to add to it. Other than that, uh, we can go into business. And the first thing is the corrective action plan update. All of you in your packet got a copy of the full corrective action plan that we have. Uh, did you all get a chance to take a look at that? Thank you. Yes, I took a good look at it. Was there any comments on that action plan? So, um, on like the paint, like what parts were different? that Rich is going to have to do? Was it just the cleaning, as I recall correctly, basically from years past and a clarification? Uh, there's cleaning and maintenance and upkeep and things like that. That's in Rich's contract. That's 
a part of that. Uh, there's a, some redundancy across the list you're going to see as you look at it. Um, the city has signage that needs to be addressed down there or, or refreshed. Um, there's a couple of dock areas there that are not part of the marina proper that we're going to have to take care of. Um, a lot, again, a lot of cleaning and stuff like that that's going to be a part of Rich's stuff, some upkeep on the docks, things like that. If you look between the two lists that I gave yep. you, you should be able to see where we're going to demo a shed down there. We're going to do some cleanup, things like that. Take care of painting some lights. So is is are we expecting Rich to do any bids on the harbor for the following year that he's going to uh, or we expect him to change his rate as regard to these some of these changes is that anticipated i'm not certain what to expect on that right now uh he really the rate he gets is the the slip rentals right now okay uh has the is this Rich's last year of the contract? Rich's contract goes through September 30th of this year. So the uh, action items uh, and the corrective action request, all of this stuff, was that what he's been supposed to be doing or is this? Uh, Those are contractual <laughs> obligations. Okay. I guess my, my question on on this is, uh, I'll be honest, if, if I was on Rich's side of this and I saw a whole couple pages of red, um, I'm not sure what my reaction would be, but granted, I, I you know, I can't put myself in his boots. I guess, I guess my question uh, to one, do we realistically think he, I get he has the contract and, and he's a part of his um, contractual duties do we really think it's going to be possible for him to get those done by the timelines presented? And if not, is this a way of, I guess, moving forward with the city um, gaining back control of the marina without a contractor in there? What we did is at this point in time, he was supposed to have that timeline to us yesterday. He asked for some additional time. So we've given him two more weeks at this point in time to come up with the timeline. Um, and when we get that, we will be able to go ahead and review some stuff to see if we feel he can realistically meet the contractual obligations. I mean, right now in the contract, it tells you you have two weeks. We're trying yeah. not to be unreasonable. It's it's yeah. winter for one. You can't do a lot of this stuff. We, you know, he's been responsive to things. I think we've emailed each other daily right now, getting things cleared up clarifying things in the list, things like that. So he's putting forth an effort to try to get things to the point where we want them. Okay. And then I guess I guess one of the questions I have kind of in, in regards to um, more so things like the windows and such like that, um, I understand that those minor, those minor fixes are underneath him. Are there, is there anything that the city is seeing that is now a major fix that is caused by the neglect of some of these minor things that have now kind of, I guess, put the city in a bit of limbo, if that makes sense? Like, you know, one window cracked is one thing, 20 windows, frames, you know, that's a whole potential remodel. Is that, I guess, how does that factor into what Rich should and shouldn't be um, approaching? And again, some of that stuff we're evaluating as we go. We're, you know, is there things that may or may not have caused that? I don't know. I can't speak to that. I've, I've been the yeah. harbor master for a month. Yeah. You know, I, I can't tell you what happened long term if it was his fault or not his fault, or, you know, if it was just years and years of age. You know, that building, my husband joked the other night, his, was old when he was in high school, and that was a long time ago. So. Um, Rich Soldier, the city engineer. Um, just, you know, 
whether it's it's one window or 20 when it was just one window it should have been repaired um for whatever reason that requirement was not enforced in the past or was not uh, required of them and it, it obviously uh, I think we would all say that from the looks of the marina and the grounds down there, that uh, maintenance hasn't, hasn't been a, a real high priority. Um, we have, you know, with uh, changes uh, in city staff with uh, the city manager coming on board, the changes in uh, staffing here, uh, Shannon coming on board, um, she was given very clear direction that we are to take it from the way it looks today to something that uh, all of us would be proud of to have in the, in the community. And because maybe in the past or over the past however many years, um, compliance with the contract was not uh, pushed it doesn't mean that that compliance with the contract hasn't always been there. Um, and because it's being enforced right now, um, looking forward, it's not uh, unreasonable. Um, maybe the volume is unreasonable because it hasn't been done for a number of years. And that's why we're willing to work with uh, the marina operators to, to give them the timeline that, you know, that they need tell us when they can get this done. Thanks, Richard, Jen. Any other comments on that Marina plan? No, Rich has got the, he's got the corrective action plan. Is that correct? What your expectations are per the contract? He's got yes, that. Yes, he was, that was and delivered to him in February. Okay, so he's seen the same thing we have. Okay. Correct. Uh, we gave him time to basically digest it before we sent it out to you. We wanted to give him the opportunity to go through it before the committee seen it. The frustrating part to me, having been in the harbor many years, is that something falls overboard and lays along someone's boat for two or three weeks unless they pick it up. It, really, the minor cleanup, little things like that, which are to me an irritant but that's really visibility why it visually looks like hell and i think that's been neglected a lot and, you know trimming of shrubs down there the stuff that grows out of the rocks and all you you know there just hasn't been any no one has held them accountable for any of that i mean i think don talked to him plenty but i don't think talking got anywhere with rich in prior years because we all talked to him well, and again, I've been directed at this point in time that the marina is going to become a, a show place, a, a sh basically a star of the of the lake where people want to come, not that they're forced to come or anything like that. We want this to be the destination they come to. And I, when I'm told that something needs to happen, we make it happen. So that's the position we're taking. That's um, the direction that we're taking the the letters that you're seeing right now are the first step towards making certain that not not only do we get to that point again but we stay there that's great yeah I, what me being a, i guess i am the senior guy in the marina for you know since the old one all the way through the new one but um al and i've talked quite a bit about other um, and I'm sure, you know, other people have too, but, um, you know, because I'm a fisherman, there's a, basically, there's a dead fish laying in the harbor for two weeks, you would think that it would have got cleaned up by then, you know, just floating around and that kind of, you know, just, those are the, uh, we, we talked about that, but, uh, you know, and I know you're making a list, which, which is good, that things should be followed in, and, you know, plan of action and, you know, theoretically we needed that, if we had it, we probably needed to have that be followed probably 10 years ago. Um, and there, you know, in other city marinas, you know, I see the dock kids painting, uh, painting uh, 
you know, the caution signs and the caution things when they're on duty, not setting in their not setting and playing games in their office or whatever. You know, that's I think that agitates a lot of the voters. Where the, you know, if you go out to other marinas, the kids are actually working on the ground. And I'm not talking about, you know, the normal health, hired help, but you know, the daily kids, the dock house and that kind of thing. And there's things they can be doing every day that I don't think they follow. That's my feeling. And again, it's it's you know it's the this is the first step. This is the first step towards getting things addressed. So um, we're going to continue to have ongoing conversations, and again, try to get us to the point where we're the shining star of Lake Huron. You know, are we ever going to beat beat uh, Mackinac Island? Probably not, but I'm going to try awfully hard. <laughs> you know, I, I I liken it to getting on a passenger train and going through communities, cities, and you're seeing the back side of the city, the worst side of the city you can see. And I hope we get way well beyond that because it's it's almost the way it's the harbor has been treated for you know a number of years, kind of the back the back end of the bus, uh, back end of the city. And uh, I, I love what's going on. I hope we can hold uh, hold everybody accountable and get it done. Okay. Other than that, any other concerns that we have down there? Did I, you guys have went through that list? Um, is there anything that you think I've missed as we were going uh, through that list? I've got something real quick. So I noticed in the, the letter portion, it talks about outdoor storage and that no yes. items, you know, should be stored at the marina there. Is that off season as well? Yeah, it, unless they're being used, it's supposed to be off site. Okay, so like outdoor mass storage that wouldn't be done at the harbor, those would be transferred, ported somewhere else. Um, it's his cribbing and stuff all has to be off site, his trailers, things like that. Um, the boat, winter boat storage items, I don't know. I'd have to look those up. I apologize. Yeah, uh, Shannon, uh, Steve here. Um, the only thing I've ever really, for uh, during the summer, there's been a, a few sailboats that have been stored on their trailer in the parking lot, which were moved uh, to the marina lift area during brown trout. So, it's, and the purpose of at least one or two of those boats was that, that they would move them to the lift and launch them when they wanted to sail. Is that activity would be eliminated. Is that how I understand this? Or that's being point? reviewed. That's being reviewed right now, Steve. Um, it's something that I was just made aware of the other day. So, is one of your boat, Steve? No, it's not mine. Oh, okay. Because if I said if it was, I can guarantee you it's not going to stay there. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's a former man. <laughs> so. You know, and, and here's quite honestly, you know, part of the discussion that we we had internally was um, where, you know, where is that fair to um, the people who are who are running slips, paying dockage to have their boats down there, and if somebody can just put it on a trailer, park it in there and not have to pay dockage but have all the privileges of basically uh having their sailboat right there is that fair to the rest to the rest of the the leasees down there um or should they be paying maybe not a dockage fee but some type of storage fee if they feel like they have to store it on the grounds so th those are some of the discussions and i think those yes. will those will warrant further discussions yeah. in the harbor advisory committee yeah, I think so. I think having a fee is stored on the grounds is is very reasonable, and there probably should be one for sure. Here's another another thing I'd like to bring up. I you know because it's a city marina, there's also so many people that you know decide they're going to put their boat up for sale and drive down there and put a sail okay. on it, park right in the middle of the parking lot and say it's for sale. And I know you know I know that. 
believe you, but I mean, I know that happens all the time. So that probably should be written in there somewhere if it's not already. I mean, it, it probably is. I just, you know, I mean, numerous times over the summer, you know, even when I'm gone, when I come back, here's a boat in the middle of the parking lot for sale that, you know, somebody just parks there and say, calls such and such a number, doesn't have anything to do with the city or who's running the marina. Because, you know, in the eyes of Alpena, that's their marina. So, you know, they can do what they want. A lot of the people do. That's, you know, that's the feeling. And, and those are items that we're, we're going to try to be getting taken care of or watching and stuff like that um boats are not supposed to be parked there after june 1st i believe according to our regulations so we're we're then that's partially why i want to uh, start taking a look at those things again i was kind of unaware of those other ones being down there parked just to be there until a couple of days ago when he mentioned it in passing in an email so um I had a conversation about that. Rich brought up the the possible rental for for the store on-site storage or whatever you want to call it. Um, we're starting to investigate some of that stuff, trying to get it together as staff in order to bring it to committee and talk about it again. Uh, Shane, I just want to say I think all what you listed there, things that need to be done, done a great. I appreciate it very much. By the way. Not a problem. Um, I I think everybody wants the same thing here. We all want a, a nice marina and a good marina and an excellent marina. Um, anything else on that? Okay, moving on. We're going to go into our marina priority short term. You all have the fee schedule in front of you. And this morning I was able to find the rates from the DNR and get them sent to you this morning. Hopefully everybody's seen that email. Uh, there's a couple rates I want to talk about. One in particular is the monthly rate. Uh, Rich told me that he's not been following our budget as far as how that rate is determined. And I'm just trying to get that cleaned up with you guys. Um, he has a rate of $478, I think, a month that he was charging down there. And the rate in our budget is based off the transient. So what I did is I took a look at our rate schedule and if we take the rate that the um, slip is by 35%, it's awfully close to that rate that he was charging by month. And it sounds like you guys uh, that he had some luck renting monthly monthly slips down there. So I don't know what your guys' opinion is, is of that, but I'd li just like to have a discussion about it. Well, let me... I can bring that up because I move, all right? And basically, I when I'm when I'm here, if I'm not here for the entire year, which some years I am, if I'm not here for the entire years, what what the city and Rich and before then uh, Don and everybody agreed on would be a, like a wall docky, which would mean that. Um, basically, it'd be the lowest we could have, which would mean like, you know, base electric, electrical and base water, which would mean that probably there's not even any water hookups because you're on the floaters or on the wall, and you'd have to move, you know, hoses to get to the water or, or electricity the same way. There's not, there's not short power there. Um, and that was basically you know, in that time it was like 350 to 400 and then it went up to four. I, you know, I think the last time it wasn't last year because of the COVID we were on, we were on the dirt. He wouldn't even put me in until I left, um, was, was 400 or 478. So I'm, you know, I've been aware of that, of that rate, but that was agreed upon by the, the ex Harbor master and, and Rich, and whoever was running the marina yes. i mean I'll, I'll say that about that now with the sale voters i'm not going there with that i have no idea how that how that is run with them because some of them didn't have an agreement to leave their boats on trailers anyway. 
And, the, and that's correct. We knew there was some agreement there. Again, I, I apologize. I didn't get a whole lot of chance to review what the whole situation was there with the sale boaters, but I'm more worried about trying to get this this monthly rate figured out so that we can see if we can get it updated in our budget, get it in there correctly. If I don't know if anybody has any opposition to us possibly changing that monthly rate around, I can take it to council if everybody thinks that that's fair at that 35% of the slip rate for a monthly rate. Yeah, I guess I guess I uh, just throw my voice out of it just because of my limited experience with that. I I know from in terms of their sale bar perspective, some of the people that use that are, you know, they're only here for a month or so and then they're disappearing up into Canada or such. So I, I mean from my perspective, I don't know enough about it to give I guess too much of feeling one way or another. I don't know if Wayne or Steve being the uh the the more experienced sale guys if if they know of anybody within a marina systems that use it and the benefits of it, but I, I guess for mine is the the science I'm, the most science from my part is just not knowing. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I haven't taken advantage of that. Have thought about it and looked into other marinas, uh, asking if they did that and ran into a roadblock there. A number of them don't. Uh, you either pay the whole season or daily rate if you want to get a month. So I think maybe we're a little bit unique in that, uh, that he's offering that. So I think it's a good idea, personally. He offered it to us last year because we brought our boat over in September. Um, and I think part of that was because he knew we were going to be keeping it here, you know, year round in the future. So, I mean, that was a nice benefit roger city also does it they're about the same percentage we are i just checked there that was the only set of rates i could find over on our side was roger cities to compare everything with they're about the same um i think they're 30 percent or 35 percent of the slip rental do we know how many um boats use that or from from 2020 or 2019? I do not. Um, he's trying to get the harbor logs to me still so that I okay. have an idea who is there all year and who is not. But I don't have a good idea of that right now. What is what is the seasonal base rate? Um, you know, there's many of them listed there. What's the basis under which we consider seasonal rates? Um, what I used was the, from his financial records, I was able to come up with about a 24 foot boat is the average. So the, the average rate is about a thousand fifty for the year. And, um, as close as I can tell from his, his records, his financial records, again, I don't have logs yet to be able to give us a really good idea of what we've got there but from the records i the financial records doing some some math that he's given me he says about 62 of the docks are or the slips are rented at this point in time that gave me somewhere right around that 24 24 foot and that um 1050 is about the average that we get for slip and i think and i think I can do because mine's mine's registered as 28, and both. Well, I think all three, Roger City, Presqueville, and Alpena, are on rate eight and nine as far as the seasonal rates. Um, I don't know about Harrisville, but I think everybody, all those, all those cities, cities agreed on that. Um, and that's about that's about what it was. All right, well, I know it's about where it is because um, as long as they don't charge charter boats double, which the waterways commission can do that if they want to. But as we've stated in the past meetings, they're not doing, you know, what may be in a charter boat. They don't, they don't do that anymore with the economy the way, the way it is. But they might, they could vote that anytime. That doesn't, that doesn't have to do. 
do with the seasonal rates of the normal bulletin. But that's that's where that's where I would be at. Okay, I'm gonna give you my idea. That's a power bulletin. Okay. My boat's not been in the harbor in the last couple of years, but I think the last rate I saw was either thirteen ninety seven or fourteen ninety seven a, a season. So I don't know where a thousand fifty. I never pay that. So I don't, you know. Right, and that's again, that's you know, and that's again, I'm, I'm making yeah, some broad crazy. assumptions. Yeah. Okay. I think we, I think we were probably a rate eight because that's, you know. That's basically what the rate is. Like I said, in Rogers and Press Fields, 14, like 1456, you know, Al. So that'd probably be, that'd probably be somewhere right around in the years. I have no idea, but, you know, that's, that's fairly close. There. Well, and that kind of leads me into another discussion I want to have quick here with you guys about the rates. Um, this morning, I sent you the new rates. I don't know if you guys seen that, but that's there's a quite a jump there in rates um, from what we're paying right now, where you guys are paying right now to what rate eight is this year, rate eight, rate nine. So um, I just did some quick math. Um, again, using that thousand fifty per per slip. Um, and did then took the expenses that it takes to run the marina based off of what we pay or what we're paying out and what Rich over at Thunder Bay Marine is paying out. On average, we're getting 1,050 per slip. Uh, the expenses between the both of us are up over 1,200 bucks. Um, so we we probably need to discuss a, a fee increase on those slips. I know you guys talk about being rate eight right now. In the budget right now, we say we're rate eight. Um, and you guys have seen those fees. At the next meeting, I'd like to have a discussion about that. So if you guys could take some time to digest those and get some feedback ready, I'd, I'd appreciate that. I just wanted to put it out there that we're probably going to have to look at a slight rate increase this year in order to keep things going forward. Um, anything else on that? That uh, I guess I'd like a, a quick vote from everybody, uh, either show of hands or an aye. Do you guys agree with possibly charging that 35% per month so we can get that adjusted in the budget? I think that's reasonable. It looks like that's kind of what everybody else is doing. Yeah, I, I support me. that. Okay, great. Anybody that doesn't support that? Jeremy okay, just great. said it. I don't know if he yeah, heard it. Got here, so I don't know. Jeremy, did you hear the discussion? Bouncing in and out there. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go on from there. Um, looking at long term, starting to look at the development of that master plan. Um, I need you guys to start thinking about where we are right now, what our situation is right now, and where we want to go, because that'll be part of these, the kind of the beginning of this master plan as we do that. I've made some phone calls trying to get prices for master plans, um, trying to get kind of that group together that will be able to facilitate that for us and help us get it done. I haven't gotten a whole lot of pricing back. I was hoping for one today and he never got back with me. So uh, trying to get that done. One thing I, again, I think I mentioned to you is we're going to look at a survey to all the seasonal voters. I do have a seasonal voter list. So hopefully we can get that survey out um, by mail to them and then do an online survey, Survey Monkey or one of them, go through and get that taken care of with them. Um, Hey, Shannon, can else on? one comment on the master plan. Doesn't the rec plan have anything in it for the harbor already? There is some things in the harbor there, but with 
as much as we'd like to change their wane, we'd really like to do a master plan in there. Um, part of that rec plan that they have in there doesn't meet the rec plan requirements of the Waterways Commission in order for us to submit for grants. They have specific requirements for a marina that they want included in those documents. So that's por a portion of this. Part of it is making cert certain that no not only you as the boaters, but everybody in the community agrees to what we kind of want to do in the future. And just trying to make certain we have everybody's voice heard for lack of better. Um, you guys are the biggest voice we have down there at the marina, but it's a matter of making certain that everybody's opinions are heard and we can kind of develop something down there that everybody wants to use. Okay, thanks. Anything else on the master plan? Okay, moving on. Um, CIP, everything went through that we asked for so far in the CIP. We were working on the budget today and we are trying to get all of our stuff in there as far as what we're asking for. Uh, I don't know if it's all going to make it through, but we are definitely pushing for as much as we can right now. Um, adjusting budgets, doing budgets in order to try to get everything taken care of down there. Is there any questions as far as those CIP items or the budgets or anything like that? Great. Uh, Cassie, can you share our website for, for us? Um, the city manager asked us to do some updates on the web page, so I hope you all got a chance to take a look at Cassie's hard work. Um, we kind of updated things, got some nice bright pictures on there and everything else. Uh, if, did anybody have any comments on the web page? I didn't see it yet. So it's a project for me to do yet. Yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't seen it either. So I'm. I'm just playing dumb here. I thought maybe I was the only one that seen it. <laughs> Cassie, yeah, so you want to scroll through and just show everybody what we did? We tried to make the front page of it when you actually Google City of Alpena Marina a little bit more bright and inviting, kind of show, showcase the community as well as the marina. Um, Don sent me some awesome pictures. I got a couple more from my girlfriend that's a photographer that was down there too. So we've got a, a couple nice bright pictures on there uh, trying to make make the marina and the town more inviting for everybody. And then we kind of took the business portion of it over to the fees page. That kind of goes into the rates and fees. Um, again, trying to just throw some pictures on there to brighten it up, make it more inviting for people. And then you guys' page for the Harbor Advisory was also updated at the same time. Uh, we got we got some more updates to do on there because of the committee or the council action last night. So we need to get a couple more uh, names on there. Oh, she's got them on there already. Cassie's good. She's got everybody on there now. So a little bit of cleanup on that. But other than that, that was kind of the web page. Did you, you guys got any comments on it? Uh, we'd be interested in hearing them. I guess the one comment I had would be, I guess what would be considered the homepage. Is there any way to incorporate maybe um, some sort of uh, park map of the surrounding area or even of like, I guess, work in conjunction with the DDA to, to maybe have, because I know, uh, for example, you know, most of it looks a good, I'm scrolling it through a mobile view right now. Um, but, um, you know, even, you know, certain amenities are available nearby, playground, basketball court. I feel like a lot of that could be 
kind of solved with a nice clean uh, map. I'm, I don't know if the DDA has got one or I mean the city, if, if you have one, then maybe that would provide, you know, this is the layout of it. I don't know if maybe that's an option to include it there as well. It, as long as I guess it doesn't make it too bulky. Um, I'm worried about putting the full map on there yeah. but maybe we can link to some of our city maps i can take a look yeah. at that i gotta look at we've got some guidelines for lack of better that we have to mm -hmm. follow as far as what our web page looks like i'm pushing them already yeah. yeah but um i can take a look and see if we can do some linking to some other spots yeah also, like, like the like the noah museum i mean if it's allowed to have a link you click on that puts you right to there or, you know even the shopping or restaurants linking that to you know, if, if, if there's a focus on the downtown businesses is what's being referenced there. You know, if even if it's just a hyperlink, I guess, um, that way they can click on it. And I believe the DDA has on their page, at least, I think they have like a list of the restaurants and the shopping. So maybe if that's allowed, I don't know if that's just, if it, I'm downtown centric personally. So I, I don't know if that's allowed or such, but maybe something like that. that way, at least there's some kind of, it clicks them into some kind of lateral movement correct and that's you know i that's i was hoping to at least get them onto the web page because yeah. then we can maybe yeah. get them to those other ones i have to check with the webmaster on that and just see if that's allowed um it's it's a good idea we can take a look at it cool thanks shannon shannon this is uh this is al i i'd, I'd like to see a little bit of a lean i, I see a lot of um, mass sticking up in the air and i don't see much powerboat action or fishing action as it relates to the marina. I'm just wondering if there's some some more expansion we could have that side of the equation. Here, here's the sad thing is when I got called for pictures, all I got was sailboat pictures. Oh, really? So okay. If you've got powerboat pictures, I would take them. Okay. We'll look around. When I, when I asked for pictures, that's all I got was sailboats. All right. We can we can show a lot of different things if you need. I guess I missed that point. Sorry, I missed your your photo uh, opportunity. Yep. No. If you guys if you guys got some some powerboat pictures because that was we were kind of looking at everything and I'm like man there's there's all sailboats but you know this is what I got pictures for so if we've got some powerboat or fishing or something like that I, I have no objections to trying to incorporate those also. <laughs> We probably don't need a shot, an ice shot of the harbor in the winter with the docks and the ice there either, but that's beside the point. I guess that they can ice skate and that could, you know, we could have that area. I guess it could be ice fishing in the harbor in that winter. But, and, and again, I we used what we had at the time, knowing that the summer yeah, of my co-op jobs is going to be take pictures. Any other comments on the web page? I'll just make one quick, Shannon. This is Steve Schultz. Um, we um, we kind of try and shy away from links to businesses or private types of things. So what we would do in that case is we would definitely link to the DDA um, because you know it, it is it's that's their job you know to promote that. They do it better than we can, um, and they're they're less likely to miss one or two than we are. Um, and so that's what we would do in that case. You know, we, we could link to NOAA, you know, they're, they're, they're a, you know, a public entity. We would do something like that. And then we do have um, a map area on the website that the maps are already stored at, and we could put a link to a specific map on this page instead of showing the map itself. And that way it comes up as a PDF and people can either print it off or save it to their phone or whatever, and it's, it's there. So we can, do, we can do all those things, but we just try to shy, shy away from the public links. Yeah, this is Anne. Feel free to link our website wherever you want. I appreciate you including the photos of the downtown that you sent along. We always appreciate the extra love. So feel free. Um, we have, we're in the process of reorganizing our website. So we'll have a little bit more information about businesses. But right now we definitely have a directory for shopping, eating, and then some of the destinations like the theater, um, NOAA, things like that. So yeah, feel free to include that wherever you'd like. I think the sanctuary is updating their um, websites also at this point. Yeah. Any we... other? Oh, sorry, Shannon. 
Do Go ahead. I guess do do we want to? I'm a little biased here. I work for the library, so do we want to include anything about the library need being nearby? Because they are they do offer free internet, and they they are just on the street. I know. I believe in the past I've heard of of boaters or, or visiting boaters or what have you. The breeze is going the right way. They can catch the the library's internet or or even going. I know some of the the people I've mentioned boaters actually coming to the the library. So just another um governmental entity type situation so nope we can put that on there definitely um you know just the library in general um if there's a i think steve we're allowed to link to the library because it's a county yeah i would think we can do that yeah okay and again, that, that's one of those things that if it's a business person on a boat there and they need to do some printing or whatever, I know the library used to offer that. I don't know if they do yep. right now or not. So it's kind yeah, of a, I, like a better business center too for them, possibly if they need yeah. it. Any other web page comments? Okay, if we're all done with that. Um, Committee applications, you guys seen the committee applications? We ended up with two new members out of that, so that worked out great. Um, we were able to get a little more diversity on the committee. One thing I wanna do on this is, I, I'm trying not to, we're trying not to be too lopsided on things, so I'm hoping to maybe, if you guys don't mind, Cassie's gonna call the roll again. If you guys could tell me what, I guess what kind of boat you have or what kind of experience you have with the boats that just helps us make certain that when I'm asking questions specific that I have the right the right people I'm trying to talk to. when I need a sailboat question asked I'm, I'm going to the sailboaters and stuff so Cassie is going to call the roll if you can just tell me if you got a sailboat a powerboat um if you're just recreational or if you're a business I'd appreciate it go ahead Cassie thank you uh Ed Rutherford. Uh, power boater. Is that what you're asking? I, power boater, and then you're a charter boat captain, also, uh, right? Yeah, right. Plus, yes. Uh, Elmo. He's left, but he's a power boater. I can answer Al. I don't know if he comes back. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Uh, Wayne. Uh, sailboat, uh, racing sailboats as well. Uh, Steve Wilson still here? Uh, we can come back to him. Uh, Steve Tanner? Wilson. He's a sailboater. For him as well. He's a sailor and racing sailboats. Okay. Uh, Tanner? Oh, uh, sailboater. How about Don? Uh, sailboater, but I also have background in research bo um, fire boats, but I only own a sailboat. Uh, Jason? Did he leave? Sailboat as well. And Jeremy? If he can't speak up, I believe he's a powerboat fisherman, right? Yeah, I think you're muted, Jeremy. Get your mic. Okay, that's. I think that's what he is. He told me that the other day on the phone, so I think Jeremy's all set. He's having phone issues, so I understand. Um, any. Other public comment? Has there has there been any ever talk of like kayak or sup launches in the marina? I'm I'm totally bringing this out way out of left field. Not with that I'm sea, with aware. Fish, yeah, like more access because I know like you know by kayak and sup board. I didn't know if that was ever something that was considered into the major CIP is maybe in addition to the marina 
for those that don't own a sailboat or a powerboat. I, I know that probably wouldn't come with like a fee or something <laughs> like that, but I it just, sorry for that being left field and wanted me to remind everyone I own a kayak and subboard too. So, but it, it clicked this other thought. So I just wanted to throw out there as well. Hey, Don, uh, this is Bridge Sullinger. You yep. know, back a hundred years ago, when I, I oversaw the marina and then ever since then, I, we have never had that request. And just to really? be very honest with you, we have never had a request for anything like that um, in the marina. I know, you know, they have talked about it um, up in the river behind NOAA about potentially putting one in there. Um, after seeing the one that was put in at Duck Park, how that functions, even somebody with as limited skills as I in the water can, can get into a kayak and get it out into the water using that. Uh, they are extremely handy. And, and I think it's a good idea. And anything we can do to increase usage in the marina, I think it is a great asset. So, you know, those are the types of things that, that um, if we don't hear about them, quite honestly, with, with everything we've got going on, we don't we don't think about a lot of those things. So that's where we're really yeah. appreciative of that. Yeah, because I know, are, oh, sorry, go ahead, Shane. And these are things that when we're doing the master plan that we're hoping you guys bring up. Okay during the middle of these these are the things that go into the master plan that possibly become part of the marina or the marina plan yeah because I, I just noticed that i felt like i noticed this year especially maybe because of covid i i know when jason and i would go out sailing i noticed a lot of um kayaks out by the mouth of the river fishing and and other people literally just doing laps so just a I've also been caught in the rain, in the middle of a rain and thunderstorm kayaking and at the marina, cowering in fear. So just thought I'd mention it. Last year, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't find a kayak. If you went yeah. looking for one, they, I mean, they were just completely sold out. So I think you're right. That you're seeing with everything that was going on, you're seeing a lot more usage. It's, it's somebody, it's how somebody can economically get out on the water um, and enjoy it. So um with that new base there you know it, it may be something we really need to look at so yeah i know that the sanctuary is looking at uh defining more and more shallow wrecks and there's a good good chance that uh, there will be some development of a kayak trail system that go along so that goes up along the shore all the way from Tawas all the way to the i guess bridge identifying you know or uh, shallow wrecks was will be uh, be nice i had one other one other thing to bring up i was out of the out of touch here for a little bit but one of them was uh, a wi-fi at the in the harbor itself is that something that's being considered a, i I've heard, I've heard that complaint from time to time with with transient boats and also uh locals that use a boat as kind of a cabin for lack of a better term. We are looking at that. We know that we had some problems down there. One thing that I've talked to IT about is the possibility of some kind of passworded access for the um, actual boaters down there. We're looking into it. I don't know if it's a possibility or not. There is Wi-Fi there right now. It's the guest Wi-Fi for the city. Um, the unfortunate part is, as more and more people get on it and you have people just sit down there and watch Netflix or whatever, it starts to limit that broadband. So that's one of the things we are looking into to see if it's possible to get dedicated Wi-Fi for the boats for the slips. Thank you. Marina's I've stayed at in the past have a password that they give you when you check in. Yes, and that's, that's part of what we are trying to see if it's possible. Um, IT is looking into it with me. I mentioned it once to him in passing. We just haven't had a chance to get back together to see if that's possible yet or not. Um, I'm hoping to make it part of an actual, when you get there, you get a packet of information. Um, that Wi-Fi password will be a portion of that. I, I do know to add to that, um, at one point the library was in the throes of a grant or was going to get equipment at one point i i think it, covid kind of really messed that up but 
at one point there was conversation about having broadcasting um, internet outside the building. So I, I guess, I, you know, it just depends on what the city's comfortable with. If they wanted to approach, that would be Nancy Musso, um, who's, I'm sure Steve probably knows who she is, but just wanted to throw that out there as well. Cause I know we were, I guess the, the second entity that provides free internet to the public. So we have a very good proxy. Yep. And that's what we're like, again, we're trying to uh, actually get a dedicated system into there if we can. It's again, okay. we're working on it, trying to see what's about, uh, what we can do to make it available that way. But I will, if we don't at that point in time, I'll put the, the library one on there probably also is other public Wi-Fi. Any other comments from the committee? If not, any comments from staff? Uh, the next order of business is our next meeting will be Tuesday, April 6th at 4.30. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on the uh, marina priorities. And uh, I'd like to take a look at the marina regulations at that point in time with you guys. I'll probably send those out here sometime with that packet so you guys can take a look at them in advance, see if there's anything we think we need to update in there. If there's no other comments at this point in time, I'm entertaining a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. Aye. All opposed? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Then I call this meeting adjourned. Thanks, Shannon. Good good. Thanks, Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks. See you guys. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.